Coming up on Good Morning Texas, we take a look at some delicious pecan goodness. We check out an app intended to make UT students feel safer. And the notable pink block generates support for two UT students. All this and more coming up on Good Morning Texas. Good morning, Texas. I'm Cortland Cole. And I'm Brady Anderson. Thank you for joining us on this wonderful Wednesday morning. I can't believe it's already the 271st day of the year. It's just flying by. Are you serious? I mean, pretty soon it's going to be Christmas, and I love Christmas. I mean, let's not forget about Halloween and Thanksgiving and all of that, you know? True. And with Halloween comes fall and festival season. Hundreds of local artists, musicians, and vendors filled 6th Street for the 36th annual Pecan Street Festival. Jessica Taylor and Elena Vieira explored the different tents and found out how UT students were getting involved. The 36th annual Pecan Street Festival took place this past weekend on East 6th Street, bringing locals and visitors alike to try the local foods and experience the live music and art. The festival pays homage to the history of Austin, when 6th Street was originally called Pecan Street. Local musicians, such as the Tiara Girls, came out to perform their newest songs and promote their music. University of Texas students were involved in the festivities. Dara Welch, a junior at UT, was selling toe rings and anklets at one of the booths. Yeah, so we're selling toe rings. Um, she, the lady Kathy has been doing this for like nine years, so she comes to every like festival. She comes to every Pecan Street festival, so we just fit in some toe rings to some people. Attendee Leti Boca Negra returned to the festival this year to experience it with her family, including her dogs. It's dog friendly. So I think that this festival is just like a really great example of what makes Austin so great and unique is just how creative of a city it is and how so many vendors can come together and make this awesome festival. Right. And it's wild. It's been the 36th annual. It's been going on for 36 years. Yeah. And I have to say the potato, that looked oh, really cool. And I love potatoes. Awesome. No, so. <laughs> So good. Well, on a more serious note, student government worked to create a tool that allows UT students to find the safest streets in West Campus. Ashley Sal walked the streets to find out more. Some parts of West Campus are darker and more dangerous than others. UT student government created a way for students to avoid these areas. The initiative is called Wise Walks. It's a map that will recommend which one of these streets in West Campus will provide students with the safest route home. Student government volunteers will survey each street for lighting, overgrown vegetation, and sidewalk maintenance. Then, each street will be given one of three ratings. Only the highly recommended and recommended routes will be highlighted on the map. UTSG plans to fix safety issues they identified. In the survey, it said, there's a question that says, are there any lights that are out? But also it says to write down the number of the light. So after we're done with the survey, we're gonna go to the city of Austin and say, hey, these lights are out. UTPD partnered with student government and confirmed they would patrol the highly recommended routes. If the officer is not on an active call for service, uh, they would go by those areas, either on foot, on bicycle, or in a vehicle and just make sure that there was a police presence along those routes in those areas. Some students don't think putting UTPD on safe routes is the best option. If there aren't like safe routes, I feel like the police should be looking at that. In a telephone interview, the president of BSG Security Services said this map may give students a false sense of security. Morrison said anything that gets students thinking about their safety is a good thing. But to remember, all the lighting in the world can't keep you safe if you're not paying attention to the world around you. Ashley Tall, Good Morning Texas. I think this is a great idea because I live in West Campus and personally, sometimes I'm a little nervous just walking late at night or even early in the morning. Um, it can be a little scary. 
Yeah, the streets are very dark in West Campus, and it just gets very scary to walk, especially late at night. Yeah. Austin Knights came together at Race for the Cure to raise awareness about breast cancer. Reporter Isabel Miller talked to one team of U UT students who used their sorority for good. This past Sunday, the city of Austin put on their 18th annual Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure Breast Cancer Walk. I'm so excited to walk with all of our friends to be there at the starting line and do it all together all the way through. People from all over the area woke up early to start their 7.30 a.m. 5K race throughout downtown Austin. People come together to make teams to show their support for their friends, families, and loved ones. It means so much. We felt so much love and support for these last few weeks with everyone fundraising and signing up. Even people who couldn't make it that love us decided to donate. It means everything that we get to start with our friends and finish with our friends today. We're here at the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure. It's overwhelming how much support all of these people have for their loved ones. There's siblings, there's best friends, there's fathers, there's mothers that everyone is supporting for this race. I have seen the people in crazy costumes with pink wigs, with pink dresses and tutus, and it's honestly just incredible to see how much support that these breast cancer survivors and fighters have. All of our moms struggled with breast cancer, and in a way to honor them, we wanted to get our friends together and give us so much support and honor their memories. Money raised from this walk will go towards education, screening, treatment, follow-up care, survivor support, advocacy, and research for all those fighting breast cancer today. Isabel Miller, Good Morning Texas. When we come back, your top news stories and a look at this week's weather forecast. Keep it here for more Good Morning Texas. Welcome back to Good Morning Texas. We have Emily Currycraft in our news and weather studio this morning. What's the latest in the news, Emily? Monday night marked the first presidential debate between Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton and Republican candidate Donald Trump. Tensions rose early on between the two opponents as moderator Lester Holt doled out the questions. The most heated topics included taxes, immigration, and foreign policy. With two debates left and a tight race in the polls, the future president of the United States is anyone's guess. For your local politics update, State Representative Donna Dukes announced her plans to resign in January due to health concerns from a 2013 car crash. The Austin Democrat will remain on the November ballot against her Republican opponent. If she wins this November, Governor Greg Abbott could call a special election to fill her vacant seat. Her resignation comes at the heels of controversy and an investigation into the use of taxpayer resources for non-governmental purposes. For everyone attending the 15th annual Austin City Limits Music Festival this weekend, Honda has partnered with Ride Austin and ACL to bring every concert goer the rideshare program Hail a Honda. To mark Honda's eighth year partnering with ACL, the company will provide everyone who has a ticket a ride to and from the festival being held at Zilker Park. These free rides can be accessed from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily with up to four passengers per car. As a complimentary gift for hailing your Honda, you will receive a free bandana and cold water bottles. Thanks, Emily. So the debate, there's a lot to say about that. It was, it was a lot. I think the biggest takeaway from the debate is the need for everyone to register to vote. Yes, definitely. The debate was interesting, but I think more than anything, it just placed the importance on getting registered because come election season, if you're not registered, you're probably going to regret it. So. Definitely. And how's the weather this week, Emily? This week, we see what could be the first hint of, a fall we of fall weather here in Texas. On this sunny Wednesday, we have a high of 88 with a low of 63. We continue to see a constant high in the mid-80s for the rest of the week, and lows ranging from 59 to 63 degrees. For those of you preparing for ACL this weekend, it is predicted Friday and Saturday will have mild temperatures and some cloud cover. We will finish out the weekend on a sunny note. No matter what your plans, get outside and enjoy this beautiful weather. I'm Emily Craycraft, back to you. Thanks, Emily. Stick with us. Former mayor of ACL, Lainey Gonzalez, joins us to kick off the first weekend of Austin's Music Field Weekend. Stay tuned. Back 
to Good Morning Texas. This weekend marks the kickoff of ACL, and who better to be with us today than the very own Lainey Gonzalez, the mayor of ACL last year. So can you tell me a little bit about what Mayor of ACL is? Yes, so Mayor of ACL was a contest that they did. Um, they only did it for two years. They didn't bring it back this year, but um, essentially I, it was a social media contest and um, I won. I had a bunch of different people use the hashtag Laney for Mayor and um, thankfully it worked out. Um, and I just got to do a bunch of really cool, awesome stuff and I got pretty much everything for free that weekend. Um, I didn't have to pay for my tickets. I got two VIP passes for both weekends. I got money to spend at the festival, money to spend at the store, um, free rides there and back. I got to hang out with the producers and things like that. So it was super That's fun. That's awesome. What was your favorite part of being mayor of ACL? Oh, gosh. Um, so many. I mean, it was just such an amazing experience overall. I Like, just the whole, both weekends were just so jammed packed. Um, but I think my favorite part was being able to go backstage and kind of see what that was like. Um, I've always been interested in the music industry, to so, so to be able to have, like, such a close look and such a personal look at that was amazing. And I got to have lunch with the producers of the festival to, like, voice my opinions. That was really awesome to be able to do that. That's so cool. Yeah. And we hear that you're working with a radio station, and you might get to do some fun things again this year at ACL. Yes. What all yes. does that include? Um, so I'm an intern this year with KGSR 93.3 Austin, and um, they do a live broadcast at Thread on Friday, Saturday before the festival from 8 to noon. Um, so I get to be at the live broadcast and help them uh, do all the social media and take pictures and help out with anything else they need backstage. And then at the festival, um, I'll be in the media tent helping them with interviews and um, little acoustic sessions that we have with a couple of bands. So I'm super excited so to awesome. continue to get that look backstage and help yes. out. Yeah. So you said you're interested in the music industry. Is that mm -hmm. a career path you want to take? Or can you tell me a little bit about yeah. your like, dreams? Yeah, yes, my, life, my <laughs> lifelong. I'll just sit down yeah, my whole story. Right no. um, yes, I'm very involved or very interested in having a career in the music industry, either behind the scenes or as a performer. Um, I'm still writing and uh, hopefully planning to record over Christmas break, things like that. Um, but as far as like the actual industry goes, I've just been working with KBRX, which is a student-run radio station here. I have a radio uh, show. I um, actually just had it at 5 to 7 a.m. <laughs> and then um, for KGSR, I've been working as their digital content intern. Um, and I'm really just trying to like stick my feet in and like kind of see what all the different parts are because there's so many the, the music industry is just such a big machine and there's like so yes. many moving parts um, so I've just been trying to get a feel of like what would fit best um, but I'm really hoping to either end up somewhere like a label or maybe like a production company like C3 that's the company that mm -hmm. puts on ACL um, or even like a management firm or radio I love radio too I'm just just trying to figure just it out anything. honestly but yeah I just anything with music I've always loved it so very cool yeah. so last question this year ACL give us your quick what are you who are you most excited to see who do we have to see just give us real quick I'm super excited for Radiohead um, I was so happy to find out that they ended up being on our lineup I saw that they were on Lollapalooza so I freaked out when we got <laughs> them um, I'm also really really excited to see um, Kendrick Lamar again he's such a good festival person I love seeing him at festivals I saw him a couple years back at ACL as well um, I'm also really excited for local natives Young the Giant um, Andrew Bird Oh, who else? Julian Baker. I've got, there's a That's lot. Incredible. Honestly, you can't go wrong. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you yeah. so much for joining us thank today. Thank you for having me. Oh, it was so great. And I hope you have a great time at ACL again this yes. year. Um, keep it here for more Good Morning Texas. Welcome back to Good Morning Texas. We're here with Jeffrey, Jeffrey McNeil from The Phantom and the L Harmonic. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So can you tell us a little about what it is The L Harmonic is? We are, we are a hip hop orchestra. We combine uh, the raw energy and passion of, of hip hop with the beautiful sounds of, of classical music and live orchestration. Okay, and that's a really unique thing. I've never heard of it being done before. How did that come about? Um, 
Well, when I was younger, my mother put me in uh, flute and piano lessons, um, and uh, I hip hop was coming into its own around the same time. So when I heard it, I actually heard those sounds together. My my first. Um, song that I mixed together was uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony with the Beastie Boys, Paul Revere, and I call it uh, B-Boy Meets Beethoven. Um, so it kind of grew from there. The first person I actually saw do what it is that I envisioned myself doing, um, you know, had a, a, an orchestra at the Grammys, um, you know, and I, I figured that was my path. That's what I wanted to do. So um, I've, been, I've been doing it since then, and we performed at Carnegie Hall last year, and, and, and this um, this week we'll be performing at Bates Recital Hall on on the 30th. So. Carnegie Hall, that's great. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, how does the composing process work for that? Is it just like regular classical composing, or is it? So it's it's. I usually hear everything at once. So I, so I hear the the drums and and how the rhyme should go and and how the music should accompany it. Um, and you know, I sit in front of my computer. Thanks to the wonders of, of um, you know, technology, I'm able to compose an entire song. You know. At at my computer, so um, so it grows from there, and then I give the sheet music to the, the musicians, and they make it come alive. So okay, and is this a team um, effort, or are you mainly in charge of it? Um, so I am the composer, the MC, the maestro. My wife is also part of the ensemble. She sings and she rhymes as well. I have a, a DJ and um, we have many, many musicians. Um, I'm actually using some musicians from UT uh, to accompany us at, at Bates. Um, so whenever we travel, we, we bring a, a group of uh, musicians, but we always like to include um, you know, musicians from the area. And it's, it's just a great way to meet people and, and to you know, grow the idea out into the atmosphere. So. So there are lyrics to every song that you have? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. What do those lyrics kind of, is there a theme behind them? How does that work? So it's basically, it's basically, you know, uh, my life events, you know, uh, what I, what I see happening around me. So, so there'll be some, some social, social commentary though, you know, about what's happening today or, or, you know, how I've grown up or, or, or the things that I envision happening, you know, um, but it's, it's just basically, just basically life. Okay, cool. So where can we find you? Um, you can find me on www.thephantom.hiphop. I have a dot hip hop. Uh, it's the first dot hip hop that I know of. Um, but again, T H E E P H A N T O M dot hip hop. And are you on social media? Yes, I'm on Instagram, The Phantom 5000. I'm on Twitter, The Phantom 5000, um, and YouTube and all that stuff. So. Okay. And we can find you performing at Bates Hall on? On uh, the 30th of, of September, and we've gotten so much love that we're coming back on March 18th. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. So check out The Phantom and the Ill Harmonic on September 30th at the Bates Hall. Yes. yes. And that's all for Good Morning Texas. Be sure to follow us on social media on Twitter at Good Morning TX. Thank you for tuning in with us. That wasn't really good.